It's Madden NFL 24. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Los Angeles Rams and the New York Giants. And it's coming up next. We are situated about eight miles west of New York City at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford. Today, two NFC clubs going head-to-head -head as it'll be the Los Angeles Rams taking on the New York Giants. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, these Giants seem to be a team on the improve. They won their first playoff game since Super Bowl 46 last year. Now, what needs to happen to take that next step? They just need to continue to amass talent, get those guys going, and become contributors, and on the offensive side of the ball, become much more explosive in the passing game. Then for the visiting Rams, you know, they found out the hard way that you need a lot of good fortune when you win a Super Bowl title. And when you don't get that good fortune as they didn't last year, things can crash down to earth in a hurry. And none of us really saw this coming. Remember, they were 12 and 5 the year they won the Super Bowl. Went 5 and 12 last year. Somehow, I think this Rams team is better than what we saw last season. Adding in a lot of new pieces in order to try and get back to the top of the NFC West. started it's Cade York and off we go from that live stadium and here comes a return from just beyond the goal line and ultimately cannot get this out to the 25 yard line as he's dropped at the 23 so here are the Rams set to go to work on offense and they're led by a man who topped the 50,000 yard mark in passing for his career a season ago in year 15 now here's Matthew Stafford and Matthew Stafford was taken first overall in the 2009 draft, and he certainly played like a top pick. Throughout his career, he's been one of the most prolific passers in the league, and there's no reason to believe he's going to slow down his production anytime soon. Not only that, he's also one of the tougher quarterbacks in the league as well. They begin the drive with Williams. And a nice job to break free of one tackle, but it slowed his momentum somewhat, and he's taken down right after. Five yards on the game's first play, second down. Hey, it's not the most spectacular play, but I think most teams will take that every single time for the first play of a drive. Begin the series with positive yardage and set yourself up for a very manageable second down. On second down, here's Stafford. Short throw, it's Higby. Now we've got a giant player here, slow to get up after that last play. We'll get an update when we return to MetLife Stadium. test for this defense. Here we go on third and inches. Here's Stafford. And the throw there going to be incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there. They forced him to throw that one into coverage and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. So on fourth down, on is Ethan Evans to punt for the Rams. Back deep is Gunnar Olszewski. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. And this is taken at the 23. And that'll be a return of 12 following a very nice punt. And it'll be giant football first and 10. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And they will be led out by their rookie quarterback. Tell you what, partner, he might just be a rookie, but he certainly looks the part of a veteran NFL starter and he carries himself like one leading the offense out there. In a lot of ways, he has advanced as a first-year quarterback, and he came in and was right at home with this offense. Good starting field position for the New York Giants here as they come up first and 10 
at their 36 yard line. Now a two-time Pro Bowler coming off a big year, Saquon Barkley. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. Second down, here's Barkley again. Get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 10 yards, good for a giant first down. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. Barney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really that's really a whole <laughs> cool. lot of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Well, let's see who's faster. A first down carry for Barkley, and they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Running again with Barkley on second down. And he'll bring this one inside the 35. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. That's why the guy with the headsets is down there. All right, they know what they're doing because they got stuffed on a running plan first down. And I think myself and probably the fans were saying throw the football in this situation. But he knew what he was doing, called another run, and now they've got third and short. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he'll be out of bounds about a half to a full yard shy of the five. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Oh, that's a sharp throw right there on third down. They're looking to get the first points of the game, and they certainly don't want to be on a field goal. So that's a nice job to get the hookup and set up a first and goal. First and goal from the six. They're going to look to throw. And they're going to get to him, a sack. Sacked back at the nine-yard line. It's a loss of four, and now it's second and goal. Well, that's not how you hope to draw it up there on first and goal, CD, by taking a sack like that. Well, they tried to be aggressive, didn't they? They didn't want to try and work their way past the goal line. They wanted it right there on that play. Unfortunately, it backfired against them. Now they have to try and pick it up here moving forward. And a short pick up there down to about the nine. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. So they're coming up here on the ninth play of the drive and it's third and goal. They'll look to throw here. He throws it on the move, but can't connect as that falls incomplete. And this defense definitely in his head there on third down, and he's pretty fortunate. They didn't call for grounding on this one. That was a good 10 feet over everyone's head. Cade York on now for the field goal. From the left hash, should be a fairly easy one here. send this one through and the Giants are off now to a three nothing lead so in the end they had the ball for 10 plays but the drive gets them three not six is it okay if I give credit to both sides on this one absolutely all right let's start defensively they hung in there 10 play drive but they stiffened when they got close to the goal line made them kick a field goal for the offense 10 play drive they might be a little disappointed they got a field goal but they moved the ball down the field with dispatch and came away with points York ready, and here we go as he sends this one away. 
And this taken in at the goal line. And his guys will get the football right at the 20 yard line. So the Rams coming back onto the field, their second drive of the game. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt. They're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. Stafford on first down. That's caught. Puka Nakua. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. And it appears we've got a member of the Rams shaken up on that last play. We'll get an update when we return to MetLife Stadium. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now a play fake it at Stafford. He's going to find Atwell open downfield. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. Give him 30 yards there. We always talk about the guy who paid off the play, don't we? The guy who caught it or ran it. But how about the elements that go into making a big play? This one in particular, able to scan the field. Pocket held up nicely. What a terrific job by the offensive line. The route well run, and the football right on the money. Now a first down carry. It's Williams. Touchdown. 37 yards for Kyron Williams. And the Rams have answered that early field goal to take a first quarter lead. A pretty well executed run. They were telling us yesterday, Charles, they were hoping to get everybody in sync, the line, the backs, and everybody looked in sync on that play. They were in sync and the field tilted. And that's where we get the term running downhill because when you've got that kind of momentum and everyone's doing it properly as you just described, it does feel like they are coming from downhill to you as a defender, and that is really hard to stop. Point after, right down the middle, and that makes it a 7-3 lead. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Taken at the goal line. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. So the Giants getting the football back here for their second drive. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three and, points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. They'll start out on the ground. It's Saquon Barkley. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Counting down toward the midway point in corner one. Second down, here's Barkley again. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And the Rams got it. They bring him down. Byron Young, the one who got in and finished that play off. 
We had a pretty good idea that they were going to pressure this young quarterback, and that's now two sacks here in the first quarter. And, yeah, this is a secret to exactly nobody because if you're a rookie quarterback, you know you're going to see pressure. Defenses want to see how you're going to handle it or if it forces you into making bad decisions. That's their goal. And a fair catch taken here right at about the 40-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Rams will go on offense here for the first and 10. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at the 41-yard line. To throw is Stafford. And this one incomplete. Threw it down at the feet of his receiver. He released that awkwardly. It almost looked like a pitcher who gripped his fastball a little too hard and let it go late and it bounced in front of the plate. Yeah, one of those fastballs that ends up at 57 feet, not 60 feet, 6 inches. Just a little short with the arm, which is unusual because we saw him in warm-ups. He's got a big, strong arm when he delivers it with confidence. Here's Stafford now on second down. He'll get this one complete to Atwell. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Out of the gun, Stafford. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Rams first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. Well, we always hear about the connections some quarterbacks have with certain receivers. I think this guy has a connection with just about everyone. Didn't mind throwing it in there against double coverage to him. Shows some confidence, supreme confidence. Big-time confidence that he would make the play for him, and he did. Up the middle, it's Williams. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. It's a gain of nine. Brings up second and a yard at the 36-yard line. Ball on the 36 now. Here's second and a yard. Off of play action. Here's Stafford. going to be taken down but there's a penalty flag in the backfield is this a hold or did they rough the quarterback so a mistake there Charles from the rookie pass rusher and oftentimes when you make the jump from college to the NFL you have to adjust to the rules but in this case the rules no different than in college once the ball's gone you can't continue on and get your shot in. That's one where you have to have some discipline. And even though he's a rookie, he really should know better. Nice job defensively to hold him to four, and now it's second and goal. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large-body tight ends, and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. It'll be a gain of five, and it's going to set up a third and goal. He's already scored once. He definitely had his eyes wide open trying to get in there a second time, but I thought that was a really nice play defensively to deny him. Yeah, it was, as you said, keeping him away from his second first quarter touchdown there. Williams again, and this time he'll score. Touchdown, Rams. So two drives, two touchdowns here in this first quarter, and he's got both of them. Well, he's certainly setting himself up for a big game here, and I think if the play caller doesn't get in his own way, they should keep riding him the entire way of this game. Until the defense proves they can stop him, that's what I would call. Extra point forthcoming. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. So that drives seven plays in length. And it was capped off by the Kyron Williams touchdown run. The 
the Rams kickoff team on the field. And here we go with the ball in the air. Paris Campbell now on the return. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. And New York set to take the field. The defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And the Rams got him. They bring him down. The perennial pro bowler Aaron Donald gets the sack. And that is the third sack this offensive line has allowed this first quarter. Man, that puts him on pace. Let me do the rudimentary math here. To be sacked 12 times in a game. I know he's not going to go for that. I wonder if it's going to reshape what they decide to do on offense in terms of play calling. Well, I can tell you what. When he popped up, shaking his head, frustrated right now behind center. So after the sack, a scenario you certainly don't work on too often. Second and 24. Up the middle with Barkley. And there just continues to be nowhere to run. He's bottled up again at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. They'll look to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Yeah, it's still early in the game. No sense taking a chance on third down and forcing one into traffic. So I like the wise play he made there. Get it to the sideline out of bounds where no one's going to have a chance at it. On fourth down, here's Jamie Gillen on to punt. That's taken it around the 40. 43 yards on the punt, seven yard return, and out will come the offense as they take over. LA set to take over again on offense. Stafford and the Rams come up first and 10 on their side of midfield at the 47. He'll look to Williams to begin things. And he's going to get this past the 50 and into giant territory. 64 yards rushing for him now to this point. Now that's the way you want to start a drive. Talk about a tone setter as well as a playbook opener. Now if you want to take a big shot over the top, you're all positioned to do so. Two yards to go, second down. Now Stafford. He'll get this one to Cup complete. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. After one, a 14-3 ball game. The Rams with the football here to begin the second quarter. As they've got it with a first and 10. Now a give up the middle to Williams. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. Now second and eight at the 32-yard line. Stafford. Open man is Atwell, complete. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants' 21. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Even against double coverage, he found enough of an opening for a noticeable gain. Two guys on him, yet he finds a way to uncover downfield for the completion. From the gun, it's a run for Williams. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. At the 18-yard line, a three-yard pickup brings 
Here's second and seven. They'll stay on the ground with Williams. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave them with a third and about five. Play action. Stafford. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And a great effort there to shed the contact, and it helps him pick up the first. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Well, this has definitely been a ball control offense here in the first half. We saw them go on a long scoring drive the last time they had the ball. And now here, they get the third down conversion to keep this drive going. Now a 10th carry. Here's Williams. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. Kyron Williams on his way to a monster game. Three first-half touchdowns as his guys are able to push that lead out a bit further. So what a first half that he has had running the football. That now three touchdown runs. And I would anticipate that when they get down in the red zone, He's going to get more chances as this game goes on, and I think that the guys blocking for him are going to ask for him to get more chances. They like the rhythm they've developed. Extra point splits the uprights, and the lead is up to 18 now. So that drive goes eight plays, and it was capped off by the Kyron Williams touchdown run. The Rams kickoff team on the field, and here we go with the ball in the air. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be brought down at the 28-yard line, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone gets him three more. And now out come the Giants. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. They'll try and start this drive in the air. This one is Slayton over the middle. It'll go as a gain of four, and it'll be second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here, and what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. From the 31, here's second and six. On the draw, this is Barkley. Oh, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle him. And this will be a Giants first down as he's got this up to the 40-yard line. So a solid run by Saquon Barkley and another first and ten here. And off the option, he'll try and run with it. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. Give him four yards there on the first down keeper. Four yards on the pickup. Second and six. Now a second and six. They'll set up to throw. And this all incomplete. He tried to check it down to his running back and nearly had the ball picked. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all. And I understand why they've looked lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. The Giants on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and six. He'll look to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. 
He was trying to get that one out to his running back out in the backfield, but that one was read and timed perfectly, and they were able to break it up. Jamie Gillen now on to punt. And he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And the Rams will be backed up deep to begin the drive as they take over first and 10. Here's Kyron Williams running out for another possession. Well, there you see it. A hat trick of touchdowns, and we're in the first half. I'm betting that he was over there saying, feed me. Yeah, oh, there's no doubt. I got to eat. There is no doubt, and he's real hungry right now, isn't he? <laughs> I mean, let's be honest about the whole thing. We don't have to be on the field to understand what he's telling everyone. Give me the ball. We're locked in with the offensive line. They're taking care of business, and I'm finishing things off. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. Down the sideline he goes. Touchdown, L.A. Cooper Cup, 85 yards. And the Rams are able to add on to their first half lead. And that time, he came out of the slot for that big play downfield for the score. I think what we just saw there, partner, was what we call scheming a guy open. Put him in the slot, know that he has tremendous speed. What you're doing with your other receivers is likely running shorter routes to draw the attention closer to the line of scrimmage to give him a chance to get downfield and turn it into a one-on-one -on -one route, often against the safety. You like your odds when he's running against the safety. His speed usually wins, and it did on that play. Extra point right down the middle. And the route is on here in this first half. The Rams kickoff team on the field. And here we go with the ball in the air. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. And New York set to take the field. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. They go play action here on first down. A short throw pulled in by Bellinger. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and that'll make it second down. Nice play call, a little bit of play action right there. If you can get those linebackers to freeze for just a split second, that's usually all the room you need in order to get it to your tight end. Now second and five. Barkley inside handoff, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. This defense has really flown around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Short throw, going to be caught by Waller. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. They'll give him four yards there. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Now that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. They'll score that a 36-yard punt, and they will take over first and 10. And we can look at Cooper Cup as the Rams' offense gets ready to take over possession, making his presence felt early in this one. First half, already over the century mark. How about the yards per completion, too? That's a pretty darn good number there. Number of catches, but he's shredding defense. Is getting big yardage with each and every one of them. Stafford and the Rams come up first and 10 at their 38. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. 
Everything looked right on that play except the conclusion. He dropped it, an in route, going into a little bit of traffic. Maybe in the back of his mind, he was wondering where the hit was going to come from. Now a second and ten. Now Stafford. That's caught. It's Demarcus Robinson. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. His first catch there, good for 10 yards and a first down. They'll run out of the gun here, Williams. And he's going to get this past the 50 and into giant territory. 88 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. It's a game of seven. Brings up second and three. Here's second and three. Stafford now to throw. Open man right side is cup complete. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. Stafford to his number one guy cup for a Los Angeles first. Didn't they tell us in our meetings that they needed to account for him on each and every play? You think a guy of his caliber? So how does a guy like him get that wide open? That usually means there's a tire breakdown on what the coverage was. That everyone thought they were doing something and they were supposed to be doing something else. But bottom line is, no matter what, you have to know where he is and cover him on every play. It's a gain of 15, and the Rams have a first down. I'm not sure how much more evidence they need, partner, than to understand that if they don't start to slow him down, it's going to be a long afternoon here at the stadium because he is just shredding them at this point. And let's face it, coming into the game, they knew he would be the focal point of their attack. This is going to take an 11-man unit on the defensive side to start making plays. So the completion good for six yards, and that's going to bring up second down. Slam route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball, but when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. Here now, second and four. Now a handoff. Here's Williams. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. Just a simple run play there on third and one, but this D was up to the challenge and stopped them, bringing up fourth down. So on fourth down, Sean McVay going to send out the field goal unit. From the left hash, it's a 36-yard attempt. And his kick here is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So everything else has gone right in this first half. Kind of follows that it would for their kicker, too, as he adds three more onto the lead. Yeah, and the way that this one's gone, definitely not looking like he's going to have to worry too much about pressure kicks late in the game. He can go out there free and easy, just work on his form, and he knocked that one through. The Rams kickoff team on the field, and here we go with the ball in the air. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Here's the giant offense now as they get ready to take over here. They begin with a run by Barkley. That's to about the 28. Second down coming up. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. 
Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Ball on the 28-yard line. Here's second and six. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Out to the right here to Shepard. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Good yardage after the catch. Is that play good for 30 and a first? Back to throw here. They'll set up the screen to Barkley. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. And good yardage there on first down because sometimes all you need to do on the screen is get one key block. That might set your man free, and that was pretty good pursuit to the football defensively, or it could have gone for more. Just need a yard here, second and one. He'll drop to throw. That's complete to his tight end, Waller. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle is going to be made at the Rams' 20-yard line. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Wide open receiver complete. The Giants going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. This is first and goal and a golden chance to get a score back here before halftime. Back to throw again. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. Touchdown, Giants! Saquon Barkley, a five-yard touchdown. And the Giants get a late score here in the final minute of the first half. Well, that touchdown certainly helps, but they've got to go ahead and convert, get to the half, and figure out how to keep chopping down this lead in a second, don't they? Yeah, they still need to regroup, and they still need to end the second quarter strong. A little bit of time left. Now Cade York for the extra point. And he puts this one through. It makes our score 31-10. So that drives six plays, 75 yards. And it's capped off by a receiving touchdown from Saquon Barkley. York ready, and here we go as he sends this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. Here's Kyron Williams running out for another possession. He's already cruised past the 100-yard mark. We haven't even gone away for halftime yet. He might not want halftime. <laughs> all right, why cool off? Keep let's, everybody here. <laughs> let's stay out on the field and keep going. But all that being said, everything is really working well for them. The play calling's been excellent. The blocking's been terrific. And obviously his vision and legs have hurtled him to this big number so far. We could be seeing something really special here. And we'll see how much they give him the ball here. Stafford, he'll find a man over the middle, 2-2 Atwell. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. A final shot before the break, Stafford. And Cup going to pick up a Rams first down as the tackle made up near the 35. So we've come to halftime. It's the visiting Rams taking the lead to the break. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. This was an extremely one-sided first half. One team showed up ready to go. The other's been in a daze thus far but there's still plenty of time left for this one to tighten up significantly.
All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Giants set to get the football, and they trail here as we get back underway in the second half. And able to get this out to the 25. The Giants offense set to begin this third quarter. Well, they look up at the scoreboard facing that deficit. A three-score game, Charles, but look, there's plenty of time to go here. The old football cliche that comes to my mind is you can't get it all back at once. They probably need something, though, out of this drive, at least three points. Are you trying to say that there's no three-score drive on that play sheet for any of those coordinators? They just don't have it, right? You're trying to get it all back. You know you can't get it back in one drive, but maybe cut into it a little bit, as you just suggested, Try and create a little bit of momentum, a little bit of a spark, and then maybe that'll carry over. And that's complete to Shepard. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. And you start to think, if it's going to happen for these guys, it's got to start with this drive. Down three scores, they need to start making some inroads. And that'll help the cause there as they pick up good yardage and a first down. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Now back to throw. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. Oh, nice defensive effort there, providing the hit as the ball got to the receiver, separates him from the catch, and normally he's a sure-handed target. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. A short one here, secured by the tight end, Waller. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Offense. They were looking to throw, holding on the big right tackle. It's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. Usually going to pick up a holding call. After the penalty, they go with Barkley. Oh, look at the juke. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Without the previous penalty, that would have been a first down. Instead, it's just a gain of 10. Caught the defense off guard there a bit on second and long, but now you still have to deal with third and long. Yeah, you do, but you feel pretty good about the last play, don't you? And maybe it gives you a little bit of confidence dialing up the next one that maybe your team will believe in it when you send it in. He'll look downfield for Waller and unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. Here's Jamie Gillen now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he'll get credit for putting him inside the 20 as the fair catch is made right at about the 19-yard line. Just 34 yards on the punt there, no return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Stafford and the Rams come up first and 10 at the 20. They'll look to throw here. Short throw, it's Higby. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. Heck of a play there to get to him quickly and get him down for a loss. I think they did a really nice job getting ready for this game, scouting, watching film, and understanding defensively what the play design was. 
On second down, Williams. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down L.A. He continues to be effective running the football, a big reason that they have the lead. And I love one of the quotes that I read about him where he said of himself, I love it when a team just hops on my back and I just carry them along. On first down, Stafford here. Pass complete there to Nakua. So give him two yards there on the completion, and it'll be second down. Now it's Stafford. To the right side, and complete to Atwell. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. He's up now to 80 yards receiving in the ball game, and he's got a first down. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. Here's Stafford. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And they have the football and will set up shop at the 33-yard line. Well, we may not see it behind the big play sheet that they like to use, but I'll bet there's a big grin on the defensive coordinator's face. A corner blitz, what we often call a cat blitz. Usually they disguise it, Brandon. You're up on a receiver. It looks like you're going to bump and run with him, press coverage, and then he just takes off straight for the quarterback and someone comes behind him to pick up the receiver. And as a former member of the secondary, it makes you happy too, doesn't it? I can't, I can't lie about it. I've got a big <laughs> grin on my face too. That was a heck of a play, a heck of a call. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They'll try and get this run game going. This is Barkley. And able to get this to the 31. He's brought down at the 31. A gain of two. Brings up second and eight. Second down and eight. On play action, they'll throw. Looking and finding Shepard on the crossing route. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. It's a giant first down on a gain of 16. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. Uh, here's a fake on the jet sweep as he'll go instead with Barkley. Yeah, he's able to skip away from that first defender on his way to a pickup of five. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. From the nine, second and five. Looking to throw. He's got some room to operate. And did he get in? No, down at the one-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it leads to a first and goal. Barkley diving for the end zone, and he'll get there. Touchdown. Well, nothing fancy there, Charles. You had three tight ends on the field. They were going to run the football. The defense knew it, but the defense couldn't stop them. And I haven't met an offensive line yet that doesn't get more satisfaction out of running the football into the end zone than pass protecting. They had determination on their side, and they got it done. Extra point by York is up and good. And the lead will be cut down to 14.
York ready, and here we go as he sends this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. Get a look at this offense led by Cooper Cup as they make their way back onto the field. Let's see here, Charles. Six catches, over 100 yards. Call that a pretty good day at the office. And I love the accumulation. The catches, the yardage. That means he's having a pretty good impact on this ball game and really helping his team out in a big way. Means he wants the football again, right? And it's funny because some of these receivers are very vocal about how much they're getting it. Others are quieter, but they still let you know, give me the ball, I'm going to make a play. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. Now a man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Williams. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a gain of 15, and the Rams have a first down. It's been an excellent day for him running the football, no doubt, as he continues to soar well past 100 yards. Yeah, it almost feels like he can just grab his briefcase and head home after putting in a full day's work at the office, doesn't it? Now a first down carry, it's Williams. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. That play was all Bobby Okereke as he got there and dragged him down for the loss. I'm getting a sense that the momentum of this game is changing since the break. Nice play there, and this D is fired up. After the loss, they'll come up second and 13. They'll try the air now with Stafford. And his pass incomplete. That incompletion certainly makes this upcoming third down a little bit more crucial. They need to find the right play to convert here and maybe start to tamp down a little bit of the momentum. The other side is starting to gain. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. To throw is Stafford. He's got his running back out of the backfield. Now he's loose again. Touchdown, L.A. Kyron Williams, 61 yards. And the Rams take a three-touchdown lead. Well, he's used to running it that distance. Here he had to catch it, too, before making the run. Heck of a play for the score. There's not many things better for an offense than a back who is a complete guy who can run it and catch it. And we just saw him complete a big-time play for a touchdown. A try here for the extra point. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. That time, 75-yard drive, five plays. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. The Rams kickoff team on the field, and here we go with the ball in the air. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. And the Giants ready to come out now. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. So first and 10 now from the 30. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. A short throw pulled in by Bellinger, and he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. The catch and run there, good for 16 and a first. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not going to catch the football. He's going to run away from you a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. They'll set up to throw. 
Catch made by Slayton. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 15 more yards there and quickly another first down. Of course the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? We're able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. They're going to look to throw. And this one too low. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try and pick up another first down. Third quarter from MetLife Stadium. Here's a second and ten. They'll look to throw again. He'll let this go for the end zone. And that will be incomplete. Try to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. The scoreboard tells the story for him a little bit bleak, and while it's not quite desperation time yet, it's definitely getting close, but the defense reads the scoreboard as well. They're going to back up and make them really earn it. Again, he'll drop to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Rams' 24-yard line. It's a pickup of 15 and a fresh set of downs. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. That ball caught by Slayton. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Give him back-to-back -back catches now. That one for 16 and another first down. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. He'll look to throw. This is caught. Touchdown! Darius Slayton from eight yards out. And the Giants are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. Trying to make a comeback often appears daunting, but the only way to get there, start small, score, and worry about getting the next one after that. New York now for the extra point. And the lead will be cut down to 14. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it was polished off by a Giants touchdown. He sends this one away. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. And the L.A. offense ready for this next possession. Their lead down from 21 to 14, but still sitting in a great spot. Up two scores here in the third quarter. Stafford and the Rams come up first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And an off-balance throw there, and it's going to wind up incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Open man right side is cut complete. And he'll get.
get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. When you call a wide receiver screen, no matter how many blockers you get in front of the guy that catches the ball, there's still an aspect of the guy catching it, turning into a runner, breaking tackles and creating his own yardage, and he just did on that play. On third down, here's Williams. And he's going to have a Rams first down as he gets this up past the 30. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Now Stafford. Open man is Atwell, complete. Yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and it's second down. A six-yard pickup brings up second down at the 37-yard line. Here's Stafford. Going to be taken in here by Nakua. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Now Stafford. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here at MetLife Stadium. So the drive takes him into Giants territory now. First and 10 at the 47. Now carry number 20 in the game. Here's Williams. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. He's having a big game running the football, but that one will hurt the yards per carry a little bit. Yeah, but the average he's got so far, that's the type of average he wants to take with him to contract negotiations, doesn't he? If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. The throw over the middle, taken in. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants' 19. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on offense because, to me, this drive is what is known as a put-away drive. You score here, that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. From the red zone now, Stafford. And he will find his man on the outside. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And that will bring up second down. They go back to the ground with Williams. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Throwing is Stafford. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And the Rams are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And that's one of those where it feels like backyard football in a sense. You say, forget about the route. Just run to the open spot in the middle of the field, and I'll find you. Good throw, good concentration on the catch, and they pick up the first down. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. They'll try and run. This is Williams. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. That gets him three yards closer here as it brings up second and goal. Second 
Stafford. Touchdown, Rams! Matthew Stafford finding Cooper Cup for the touchdown there. And the Rams have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. Well, I've heard you use the term put-away drive, and that right there seemed like the definition of a put-away drive. Yeah, it certainly just pops right up out of the book, doesn't it? Because up two scores already, just wanted to possess the football, keep converting and picking up first downs, and if the drive ends in three points, that's terrific. If it ends in a touchdown, fantastic. Point after, right down the middle, and the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. And now out come the Giants. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, it's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards. It moves the sticks. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but... Certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. Well, they'll certainly be on the tablets going over that one for sure. Clearly, they were expecting something else out of the defense and couldn't adjust to make that completion happen. So second down and 10, once again, they'll go from the 40. They'll look to throw here. They'll get this out to Barkley complete. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. You got the big lead defensively willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. And this offense on third down today, they've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This will be third and six. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And this is Shepard on the catch. And he will have a Giants first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. This is a nice job of just taking what the defense is going to give you on third down. You're not looking for a big play downfield. You just want to find something that can get you past the marker. They found it and were able to keep the drive moving. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And the Rams got him. They bring him down. Multiple defenders getting to him there for a huge loss. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. So after the sack, a scenario you certainly don't work on too often. Second and 24. They'll look to throw. Gets this out to Saquon Barkley. Touchdown, Giants! Saquon Barkley, 64 yards. And the Giants have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. 
Well, forget about the weapons out wide. He knows he's got another weapon in the backfield of the passing game, Charles, and he utilized him perfectly on that play. And the offense coordinator showed me something on that play, Brandon, because so often during a game, our cameras find them looking down at their play sheets, and you wonder if they're absorbing anything. He had something specific in mind, and he went to it, and it worked well. York ready, and here we go as he sends this one away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. Here's Kyron Williams running out for another possession. And really, a lot of guys you could highlight on this offense with how well they've played, but he's one of them. He's been spectacular so far. I'd say he'd be the number one, wouldn't you? Yeah. Because it's not just the numbers. It's, as you said, I think he said focal point, but well, that's what he's been, and that means he's created other opportunities because they've had to bring the defense to him. He's run it really well. He's caught it out of the backfield. They're trying to stop him. That means there are chances for the rest of the guys to do damage themselves. Meanwhile, Stafford's throw, it's complete into the hands of Higby. That's good, the completion there for seven yards, and it's second down. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Now second and three. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep, and that one never got off the ground. He's going to be stopped up well behind the line of scrimmage. He'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. To throw is Stafford. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. On the return is Olszewski. A very nice punt that time, but they get 11 back on the return. The possession switching back to the New York Giants. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news, but this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their own 44. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Being chased out, and he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. Taken down for the fifth time this game. Multiple defenders there to get him. It has been a rough afternoon for him trying to get rid of the football. See, that's now five sacks. How'd you like to be the offensive coordinator, the offensive line coach trying to come up with an answer for this pass rush? What blocking assignments do you change? Can guys play a little bit better? And we're seeing the end result on the scoreboard. Long day in the pocket for their quarterback. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. What a sequence there defensively. You get the sack to move him to third and long, then here, just nothing available, and he's got to throw it away. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. They'll set up a throw. And that is incomplete. But the pressure there on third down, forcing the errant pass. Fourth down coming up. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there.
Looking for Shepard deep. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. The Giants go on fourth, but come up empty. And the Rams get the football in outstanding field position. Apparently, they weren't interested in playing the field position game. They opt to keep their offense out there. A big mistake in hindsight. Yeah, that one backfired, and hindsight's always 20-20, but let's call it what it was. We would have first guessed that one and said, don't do it here. Bad situation. I think they need to be closer to midfield before I would start to think it was a good idea. Yeah. And once you start taking risks like that, you're going to have to keep taking them throughout the game, especially when they don't work. Yeah, at this stage of the second half, interesting. From the gun, it's a run for Williams. Dances by him. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Well, that's a pretty good drive starter right there. And I don't know, partner, if you're even thinking about sitting on the ball right now. They may just want to run their regular offense. In plus territory. And, and as an offensive coordinator, you don't want your team to go into a shell, do you? No, you really don't. Because as soon as you take your foot off the gas, it's real hard to put it back on and mash it. Because once everyone's emotions come down, Hard to start him up again, so I think he may want to keep him cranking high right here. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Seven catches for him now in this last one, a first down. Now we give up the middle to Williams. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. Pass complete there to Nakua. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Eighth catch for him now. He's been a big factor. And it's a first down. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Up the middle, it's Williams. And here he'll get it down to the seven. 155 yards rushing for him now to this point. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Rams football here as we get your reset. So they come up on second down and they can get another run like we just saw. Would likely put an end to this thing. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. The Giants going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave him with two remaining. We'll be back after this. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. They'll stay on the ground with Williams. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. So on fourth down, Sean McVay going to send out the field goal unit. This to make it a three-score game late. And this one is right through. And that will extend their lead even further. So that not just important in the fact that it widens their lead, but really that was a textbook job of just hanging on to the football. And we know all the time that coaches talk about time of possession. Sometimes it's a stat that doesn't matter much, but in this drive, it matters a lot. They want to reduce time and score points and lock this game down. Set now to kick this one away and off it goes. Campbell returning it, taking it about the one. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. And New York set to take the field. 
Well, probably not much that they can do at this point, CD. Down three scores late in the fourth quarter. This is going to be a little too much to overcome, you would think. Yeah, they'll go down swinging, but in the end, I think we saw the writing on the wall a while back because one team was clearly better than the other in this one. And while it didn't quite reach blowout status, I think we knew who was going to win this one well before we got to this stage. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Pass is caught by Wandale Robinson. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. Second and two. And he'll get this underneath, dropping it off for Barkley. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Ten yards, good for a giant first down. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that, second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. It's Barkley once again bringing in the catch. So the completion good for just three. And that'll bring up second down. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. Back to throw again. It's hauled in by Shepard. No gain on that one, and it's going to bring up a third down. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. Again, he'll drop to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. The Giants going to burn their third and final timeout as they stop it with 14 seconds to go in the game. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They'll look to throw again. And that went to the right side and incomplete. This has been a rough one to put it mildly for him. And after this one's done, you just feel like at the post-game press conference, this team's going to have a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. He'll look to throw. And the Rams got him. They bring him down. Byron Young picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Well, this was a fun one today if you like points. A lot of them went on the board. Both offenses were clicking. Charles, these defenses, meanwhile, have a little something to clean up before their next contest. Yeah, neither end zone had a stop sign in it, did they? I mean, for both sides, visit it. And with frequency, not fun to be a defensive player, but on the offensive side of the ball, those guys had a blast. One team came away with a victory, even better for them. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. With that, we say so long from MetLife Stadium.